today we'll be discussing American-born photographer Margaret Bork White, who was very well-renowned and well-established as one of the first female photographers of her time and generation. She initially did industrial photography in Cleveland, where she had initially gotten the attention of Henry Luce, a publisher of Fortune magazine, who hired her in 1929. The next year, she was sent to the Soviet Union, where she was the first foreign photographer to take pictures of the Soviet industry. From the Soviet Union, she then began to uh, photograph pictures of the Dust Bowl for Fortune in 1934. This project led to her publication of You Have Seen Their Faces in 1937 that documented the human aspects of depression and featured tests by Erzgan Caldwell. Margaret Bork White had a mission as a photographer. She wanted to demonstrate the realities of American life and human life, and this was one aspect that had to be shown. As you start to get familiar with your history, you'll understand that after the Depression, we start to see the beginnings of World War II approaching the whole wide world. Uh, Borg White was one of the first four photographers hired for a newly conceived magazine called Life Magazine. Henry Luce again had offered Bork White this job as a staff photographer. She then began to have projects throughout World War II where she produced a number of photo essays on the turmoil in Europe. She was the only Western photographer to witness the German invasion of Moscow in 1941. She was also the first woman to accompany Air Corps crews on bombing missions in 1942. Some of the pictures that you'll start to see featured are demonstrations of her equipment, herself, and this picture right here was when she um, began her career too, taking pictures of Prohibition. Margaret Borg White was not intimidated by being one of the first females to pioneer her career. She was in fact thrilled with the opportunity as she sought many traveling experiences and was able to work side by side with not only the US government, but with fellow photographers and international governments as well. They say that pictures carry a thousand words. Well, here's one for you. This demonstrates her traveling with the Air Corps um, during World War II. In this picture, you see the little bill. This was a bombing plane that was used. Um, and you'll notice that there are little pictures of bombs and little pictures of swastikas. The pictures of bombs are how many bombs that were deployed from this plane. The pictures of swastikas were how many German planes that were taken down from this bombing plane. So as you can see, in World War II, they did like to keep a document of uh, fighting the enemy. Here we see demonstrated a conference and discussion in regards to military strategies. This was during her time with the Soviet Union. Caution. The next images display graphic content. This was during her time as she traveled with Bataan's army through Germany in 1945 as it liberated several concentration camps. Here you see images of the atrocities committed. Margaret Bork White knew her platform and knew her audience. She was able to take pictures to document and to really demonstrate what had happened in this foreign country. Such powerful images are displayed here as we see her experience through her lens. You see an innocent being hung for his ethnicity and his race and you see the German people surrounding that are either looking down or cowering away from what had happened in their own backyard. Here again, we see German civilians being walked past the atrocities that lay. In the corner, you see bodies of Jewish prisoners that are emaciated and stacked up like a pile of bones. Using these images, she was able to relay the actualities of what occurred during World War II. While people were fighting a war, there were others that were being tortured and imprisoned. This was an image that really haunt me. If you notice this man's body, he has sores and is just completely worn down and so thin. And he's being inspected by a Czechoslovakian doctor currently. Some of the most noteworthy photography missions was when she was able to 
photographed major international events, including Gandhi's fight for Indian independence. When she worked with Gandhi, she was given specific missions and specific instructions to only photograph him in natural light and to not bother him as when she went to photograph him, it was during his day of silence. She is most recognizable for her work with Gandhi, especially these images that were standstills and during this time were pretty easily accessible to not only those in America but internationally. She described Mahatma Gandhi as 110 pounds, thin but strong. He was not a frail man, and his fingers were long and nimble, which made the spinning wheel a soothing act or hobby for him. Bork White contracted Parkinson's disease in 1953 and made her last photo essay for life called Megalopolis in 1957. Her photojournalism demonstrated her singular ability to communicate the intensity of major world events while respecting formal relations and aesthetic considerations. Everything she did had a purpose. You never saw her lens go out of place or go in an area where she was unwelcome. She was given the ability and given the respect because of who she was and how she treated her work. All the pictures that you saw were credited to Margaret Bork White. Obviously, minus the ones that she was in. Those were supplied from Time Magazine and the Library of Congress. 